Welcome to this episode of DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, I want to follow up a bit on the heated bed project that I did for the Creality C10 a while ago. So I want to break this down into two parts. One of the big controversies, controversial pieces, if I spit that out correctly, is the cork. So I want to talk about the cork first. So. Uh, what I want to do is, this cork has been sitting in my basement a while. If you remember back and if you look in the uh, playlist for the laser cutter, I attempted to laser cut this and it caught fire. And this is what I want to talk about. So up in the corner I'm going to put this burning. So I put a moisture meter on this. This is about 32 percent moisture right now. It's been sitting in my basement for about a year. It's summer here in Michigan. It's humid down here. And this is burning with just basically a, a lighter, you know, a big lighter uh, burning it. Now, the one of the worst pieces about this is cork also is very dense, so it tends to smolder a lot. And I, I tell you a little bit of a story about how this affected me about 20 years ago. So I had an office and I had cork board on the wall in the back. Somebody left the coffee pot on overnight. It was pressed up near the wall, but it wasn't touching the cork board. The continued heat and the fact the cork board had been up there for you know several years had dried out the cork board. It was the middle of winter, and the cork board started to smolder from the continued heat over the night of the coffee pot. And eventually, the smoldering turned into flames. There was a fire. Fire department came. Lots of smoke damage, damage to the building, etc. So cork, as you can see in the video, and from my personal experience, does burn. So, I, you know, again, I've seen the stuff on Wikipedia. I, I'm not sure what their driver is for that, but again, cork does burn. And the piece is, uh, you know, with this, a lot of people say, hey, you know, Joe, uh, this bed doesn't get hot enough to burn the cork. Well, you're sort of right, but what's going to happen is this bed, through continued use, is going to dry this cork out, sort of like in my office, office example of sitting there in the open for years and being middle of winter this is going to become very dry and so this is going to become a susceptible fire hazard and not because of the heat of the bed but you're running a high current through this bed so now if this bed shorts out and uh, that short comes in contact with this this is going to be like tinder and what's going to happen is this is not going to burst in the flame and maybe that's why in Wikipedia that they're talking about it this does not burst in the flame this will tend to smolder into a fire like a dense piece of oak wood sort of wood uh, because a lot of people wine enthusiasts save up the corks actually wrap them in newspaper and use that for bonfires because it burns so long because of the density of the cork the same thing's going to be happening here now you say joe that can't happen what are the odds of shorting it out well if you go over to chuck hellebuck's channel and you look at he, he on camera with one of the one house he had in about a year ago actually had a short and spark on the bed so now think about that situation so you've got this piece of dried out kindling you're printing your bed shorts out while you're sleeping at night on a 16 hour print that this monster here prints and this starts smoldering you wake up in the morning and hopefully you'll have smoke alarms and they'll go off and, and save your butt but if you don't this can create a fire hazard so i really don't recommend cork for an, insulate, uh, an insulator for a heated bed. Now, all you folks hopefully are big people and responsible people do what you want. I don't care, but I'm just kind of forewarning you, sort of a public service announcement. It can happen and it has happened in similar situations. So cork does burn. So that public safety announcement aside, I want to move on to this. Again, getting a lot of comments on this. So I want to answer some of these comments. So I want to take this remaining piece out. I haven't had time to put this on the uh, bed yet. I'm going to do that. But one of the things, if you visit their website, the sticky adhesive back is rated to 300 degrees Fahrenheit or about uh, 148 degrees Celsius for uh, continuous and sustained use. Again, I'll put the link to their website below so you can see it. So this is designed to be attached for long term to higher heat substrates like this heated bed so because this will this will hold and can be sustained up to 148 degrees this can't go past 90 so you know they're technically per their specifications should not be an issue now a lot of people said joe you got it going the wrong way you should have this side up well here's the thing again if you read the instructions what you'll understand is this side is designed to reflect radiant heat because 
there are two functional sides to this obviously this side and this side so if you have a car and that's what this is uh, mainly designed for is a car situation where you want to create a heat barrier and put this say on your firewall inside your car between your motor your motor compartment and your interior compartment this is going to reflect radiated heat now this is the key piece radiated heat is non-contact non-convectionary heat it is projected heat so you're heating objects not the air around it so this is important but that's not the case here so if I take and put this against here this is not radiated heat any longer because this metal surface is coming in contact with it it's just like if you put you know you take uh, aluminum foil and put it over your turkey and you put it into an oven what happens is it breaks down that uh, radiated heat uh, from re directly reaching the turkey and turns it into a bit of a convection and that's how convection ovens work too to, to brown and cook food very fast is it circulates the air at a very high speed so hot fresh hot air is always impacting the surface well if I put it like this that's what's going to happen but it, because the thing is this is this side is meant to reject heat this side is meant to keep whatever is in in whether it's being cold or heat think of this like a glass thermos bottle if you will from the olden days and I know a lot of you might not remember them but there was a, a, a glass tube the vacuum and then the metal outside now mostly the metal outside was meant as a structural holding but this is really what's happening here is this uh, fiberglass is creating basically an air gap uh, between the bottom and the actual heating element so what is coming down through is actually because this metal is is actually if I get it in the frame here is on both sides so this air gap is now preventing the convection from touching this because these fibers are not going to be highly thermally conductive that's going to reflect the heat back so it's going to keep the heat back in the bed now there isn't a huge thermal co coefficient of this fiberglass and this is why I think having two of them uh, one overlapped on top of the other will be better uh, but it's it is far better than putting it I believe on this side um, because what's going to happen is again this is going to be like an insulative thermal barrier so sort of like you know if you're in a hot climate you're going to insulate your house you're going to put that vapor barrier on the inside of your house to keep the heat on the outside of your house or the cold or whatever converse temperature you want inversely on this side of the fence so I, I don't think mounting it this way um, is going to be as of much value as mounting it this way. So hopefully that explains it. Maybe there's some thermal engineers that will tell me if I'm full of bupkis. But uh, I, I think that's a pretty good concept because one of the other pieces I had folks bring up is the fact uh, about mylar blankets or these thermal space blankets first responders have. Well, it, really the way that they work is not so much because they're shiny like this they just happen to be shiny like that uh, most of how they work is because the the plastic or the mylar that they're made out of actually contains the moisture from the body because the way the body cools itself or loses heat is through evaporation from the skin well the mylar stops that from happening so actually the the uh, aluminumization of this uh, in the case of those mylar blankets has very little to do with the reflected heat of your body because you're not really a good we are not really good radiators of heat in that fashion that's why we sweat that's how we lose heat so hopefully that's explained a little bit um, about my thinking on this and again I'm always happy to hear more so constructive criticisms are always welcomed um, you know calling me ignorant or stupid usually will just get you banned from this because I'm not going to listen to that but if you have a technical argument happy to listen to it uh, because I have researched this actually quite a bit since doing this video uh, or the original video which I'll have a link to below by the way so hopefully you found this a little bit interesting uh, also hopefully it's cleared up a couple uh, misconceptions about cork and also this material and all that kind of stuff and if it did hey give it a thumbs up subscribe buttons coming over there let me know what you're thinking in the comments down below i always like to hear it especially if it's constructive and hey we'll see you in the next video cheers please click like below and subscribe to the channel